was all about? Well, as far as I'm aware, this is the first uh, collection of Jamie Reed's work that spans his entire career. As far as I'm aware, it's um, the first kind of uh, retrospective that goes from everything that he's ever done. Because um, I've been to previous uh, shows where it's been just more specific about um, the project he's working at at the time, which uh, at that time it was like an um, American Red Indian. And he had this friend of his uh, that came over and did an amazing kind of talk and a dance, and they had teepees, and uh, that was really amazing. But this covers some of that, but obviously it goes well, back to the uh, Sex Pistols, which is the most... Uh, I think for so many fans, this, this kind of the sex business is how we l learn about Jamie Reed. It's so iconic and so important to music, culture, art. What it means now is it's very hard to sort of. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it means now. With, you know, with the word punk, what does that mean? You know, it's, it's a word that goes back to America and the Depression and. I think Kerouac used the word punk, and, but God knows what it what it means. But um, but you know, it's just you look around the exhibition, and it's just like stuff that you know it means as, as much now as it meant in '76, and still you know with the people camping outside St Paul's, it's um, very very relevant and uh, fantastic. You know, what is your favourite piece in the gallery? Well, I really like the. Um, there's a couple. There's a, a kind of one that combines a, a French um, liberty. <laughs> That's the cover of Jamie's book that came out in the 80s. With, uh, but I also I've got really vivid memories of the jubilee uh, with the Queen. Basically, you messed with the Queen. That's like that was. He was. I think he was the first person that ever messed with the image of Queen Elizabeth II. No one else would dare, because apparently it's like, you're not even supposed to deface a stamp, you get into trouble, but he did it.
for the Lunar Cycles! Impromptu performance, absolutely beautiful. Uh, where can we find your material? Where? Facebook forward slash Lunar Cycles. Luna L-U-N-A-R, Cycles, S not Z. C, love that. Thank you very much. Good night, God bless. Get a drink, get drunk, go home safely, but enjoy the Lunar Cycles. Goodbye! So, Nigel, yeah. can you tell me, how, how do you know Jamie Reid? Um, through, I think it was the People's Distribution Service, around about 1971. And what was the People's Distribution Service and, and, and how was Jamie involved with, you know, give us a bit more information, please. Well, there was a, a whole network of community presses around, uh, and it was a group, it was all the community presses getting together, and I met Jamie through that, and, he's, and, he, was, and he was had Suburban Press, and so I got to know him through that, and I worked on Suburban Press. What is your favourite era, art piece, whatever? No, it, it's, it's everything. I like Suburban Press, I like Pistols, I love the slates, I love the stained glass, I love the pictures around uh, the paintings, um, 
and I don't think I think if you try to sum up Jamie as one thing or the other uh, you won't get it it's really simple it's about a whole load of different things that come together and sometimes don't come together what can you say about his most recent work what we're up here now with the eightfold year um, well probably the most recent work is what happened to Fulham today and what happened to Arsenal um, and that is probably more important at the moment because uh, Fulham drew away and Arsenal won away so probably we're in quite good moods tonight but people don't know he's a Fulham supporter. No, he's a fucking nothing Fulham supporter. When, when Fulham got beaten in the FA Cup in 1970, fuck, four or five, right? Him, uh, uh, he, he, produced, he printed a great t shirt which said, Fulham, FA Cup losers. So you have to have a sense of humour to be a Fulham supporter. Yeah. Right, let's talk about your sense of humour, right? Yeah. That's genuine. Well, there's not a sense of humour when it comes to Fulham, really. Right. Well, yeah, but you yeah. have to have one in order to survive many years. But let's take, for instance, what's behind you. Nature still draws a crowd. Is there a sense of humour in that, or is it just political? Well, 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 do you find it funny? I do. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, there you go. Question yeah. answered. You know. Do you think he's an anarchist? No, I think he's a subversive, humorous... Artistic genius. Well, there you go. So you've answered the question yourself. There's no point asking me. I haven't got no, a fucking clue. No, 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 no. But we just want to tell the, the audience, you know, actually, you know, it's not what you think. And there's it's a lot not what you think. No, no, that's for sure. It's not what you think. If I said I think one of some of those beautiful work he's done is on stained glass or on a slate, uh, uh, and it doesn't have a a collage to it. Doesn't even have a little, doesn't have any graphics to it. Uh, that's what I love. One of the things we have in common is a love of Tom Paine. Tom Paine said, um, "It won't be from the difficulty that loans can be procured that the system will break up. On the contrary, it'll be the ease that loans can be procured that will hasten that event." And it was written in 1796 in a pamphlet, and it's interesting, it was a pamphlet like in the French Commune and all the things that suburban press, it was in a pamphlet entitled The Rise and Fall of the British System of Finance and Agrarian Reform. Now, if I quoted that to you now, you'd think it was somebody making analysis of what happened in, our, in, in the financial system. But it's 1796, so everything keeps going. I mean, the, the issues you face then and the issues we face now, and that was 200 and odd years ago, 50 years ago, still doing the same issues we're still facing, whether it be 60s, 70s now. So uh, it's as relevant as it was 250 or 300 years ago. It was irrelevant when you look at, at the diggers and the levellers. It was rele as relevant then uh, it, you know, it, as it is now, and, and we're going back 500 years. And yeah. Jamie's a great fan of the Diggers and the Levelers, but particularly the Diggers and Gerald Wynn Stanley. <laughs> you what? Monumental, monumental, iconic artist uh, that we've all grown up with. And uh, after a little while, we realised that he did a few different kind of things and worked with a lot of different people. And um, I'm wondering why these things aren't actually all framed up with the price tag on them, because <laughs> it would be really nice to have them. But perhaps we're being invited to take them off the wall, but I don't think so. I mean, they are beautiful pieces, and the fact that they're just stuck on is a bit of a concern for me. Yeah, but when you go around and you look, uh, there's, a, there's a whole... Uh, era and a whole philosophy that's carried through to today. Um, it's all relevant to um, a lot of the th a lot of the statements could have been written today. So quite enduring and quite valuable. Good stuff. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Rosie. Rosie and. and, and why are you here at this exhibition? Uh, I feel it's a bit uh, part, of, part of my history and muddy good artwork and, you know, 
will be coming back to see much, much more. Very yeah. good. And um, yeah, and one of them is the film. The film? Yes, the film. I feel that it's, it's not in the right position because it's, it should be centre. And the centre is by the bed, which is a bit radical, and where the hub hub of, of everybody is, where it is all, all centred. So it's, it's the motion down here and the energy down this end of the um, art gallery isn't doing the, the justice that the video deserves. And if it's in the middle, by the bed, it looks controversial, people take notice of it, and it would be viewed a lot more. That's where it should be. There, just there, where that couple is. You know, that's where you need a TV. That's where TV should be, by the bed. Logically. <laughs> it's the end of the night. What we do is, is now that all the crowd have gone, and we're going to see a bit of the actual artwork for all the people, um, I'll take you around and just show you a little bit. Thank you very much, people. Thank you. Oh, and so did it all start again? Yeah. You're sick on stage, you spit at the audience and so on. I mean, how can this be a good example to children? Well, people are sick everywhere. People are sick and fed up at this country, telling them what to do. But not getting paid for it. Pardon? But not getting paid for putting on that sort of public show. Well, nor are we. We ain't even being allowed to play.